What's up guys? As you might know already, I'm a competitive programmer. And competitive programmers are the best at, yes, you've guessed it right, solving algorithmic problems, especially those from coding interviews. If you don't know what competitive programming is, then be sure to check out my channel to learn more about it. So in this video, I did a mock Google phone coding interview with Clement. Clement is an ex-Google engineer, an ex-Facebook engineer, and a co-founder of AgoExpert. He has a YouTube channel about software engineering, and he also made another mock interview video on his channel, which simulated an on-site whiteboard coding interview with a harder problem. So be sure to check out his channel. By the way, if you don't know what AlgoExpert is, be sure to check it out because it's an online platform that will prepare you to ace coding interviews. Go to algoexpert.io slash tmw and use the promo code tmw to get a 15% discount on your purchase. Be sure to like and subscribe and enjoy the rest of this video. Hey William, how's it going? Everything's fine. How about you? Good. I'm excited for this uh, second interview that we're doing here. Are you excited? Yes, I am. All right. So we are going to put 45 minutes on the clock and I'm going to start the timer now and uh, then I'll give you the prompt. Sounds good? Yep. I'm ready to start. Okay. Starting the timer now. So for this uh, interview, we are going to work our way through at least a couple, maybe a few uh, different problems that are all, that are all sort of related. And uh, we'll start out with something perhaps simple that you might already be familiar with. Uh, but imagine you have a binary tree. So I'm going to paste here an example binary tree that's rooted at a node with value one. Um, we define the depth of a node in a binary tree as the distance from that node to the root node, or in other words, how many edges you have to traverse upwards to get to the root node from that node. So like the depth of the node with value eight here would be three. The depth of the node with value one would be zero as the root node. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I want you to write a function that is going to take in this particular binary tree or any binary tree, and is just going to return the sum of all of the node depths in this binary tree. Oh, okay. So um, in what form will the binary tree be given? So, so imagine you've got a class. We've just got like a, B a binary tree node class. If you want, you can just call it node. And it's got a value property, a left property, and a right property. And the um, left and right ones are going to point to the child nodes or like the null value. And the value property is going to point to an integer. Uh, oh, okay. So the sum of the depths. Okay, so call this uh, sum of depths. And then I'll be given the root, right? Yep. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll keep I'll DF. First thing I need to do is find the depth of all of the nodes. So in order to do this, I'll just start a DFS from the top node. And then in the DFS function, I'll pass in the node and also the depth of the current node. Okay. And then each time, uh, each time I go down one level, I increase the depth by one. So, okay. So, and so each, so for each node, when I DFS onto the node, I'll know the depth of the node. And then what, and then in the DFS function, I also add the depth of the node to a global variable, uh, called answer. Okay. So, uh, guess I'll just write the code now. Yep. Sounds good. So have the answer and then initially the answer is zero. And then we also want to return the answer in the end. And okay. we do our DFS and we start from the root node and the root node starts from a depth of one. So we call it DFS, call it DFS, um, root. Zero. Then our DFS function node u, and then we have the depth of 
the node. Okay, so once we have the depth of the node, we'll uh, we know the depth of node u is here, so we'll just add it to our answer. Okay. And then we also need to DFS to the left and the right uh, children if there are any. So uh, first thing I need to do is check if the left and the right children actually exist. So in in C++, I think I can just do this. Oh, by the way. Uh, okay. Uh, this should be a reference. So I need to add the stuff. Sure. And then if the left child is not null, then I'll do a DFS on the left child and I'll add one to the depth because the depth, the distance from the root increases by one. And then yep. do the same thing for the right child. And yeah, this looks good to go. Okay, yeah, I think this, this would work on, on the binary tree. So this was sort of like the, the introductory problem here. Now let's assume we wanted to, to up things a little bit. We wanted to increase uh, the, the, the amount of stuff that we're looking for. So here, you calculated the sum of all of the node depths in the tree rooted at one, right? Yeah. Now, let's try to write a function that is gonna return the sum of all of the subtrees in this binary tree, in the, in the input binary trees, all of the subtrees sum of depths. So like in this, for this particular binary tree, your function, your sum depths here would return, I think 16, that would be the, the answer, right? Now imagine we were also looking for the sum of the depths of the binary tree rooted at two, the binary tree rooted at three, rooted at four, at five, at six. So of all of the subtrees, and we want to add all of those node depths. Oh, okay. And, and the answer for this, so for the second problem, let's call it prompt number two, but we're using the same input binary tree for, for the sake of the example. The answer would actually be 26. Do you, do you, are, are you understanding how I'm getting or computing this 26? Oh uh, yeah, I'll just like go through I'll just like calculate it myself just to be sure. Okay, so the subtree yeah. rooted at two has uh, has a six, and subtree rooted at three has two. So that makes twenty four. Then the subtree rooted at four has two. So okay, so it totally adds up to twenty six. Yeah, I get what it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. How about I'll just move this part to the top? Sure. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So. I think uh, since like a tree is like kind of a recursive structure, I think maybe if we calculate the sum of depths in the subtrees of two and three, we might be able to use that information to calculate the sum of depths for the entire tree rooted at one. Okay. Okay. Um, let's consider what happens to the Steps when we move from we move when we move the root from two to one. So when we move from two to one, the depths of all uh, depths of all five nodes in the subtree of two are increased by one. Okay. Okay. So uh, and then similar thing happens for the subtree root at three. So when we move the root from three to one. All nodes in the subtree of root three are increased by one. Yep. Okay, so uh, in order to get the new sum of depths, we can take the old sum of depths of the left subtree, add that to the old sum of depths of the right subtree. And then in order to fix the fact that we moved the root to one, we should add we should add to that the total number of nodes in the left subtree and the total number of nodes in the right subtree. Okay. Okay, so in my DFS function, uh I might okay, so for my DFS function I'll return two things. So um I'll I'll just make a 
prepare for this. So DFS and then node view and then uh, I don't know if I need the def right now. So I'll just leave it. I'll just leave the parameters like this right now. So so for the pair that it returns, the the first element in the pair will store uh number of nodes in subtree. And then the second element of the pair that is returned will return the sum of depths in the subtree at u. Okay. Okay. And then uh and then so uh, let's initialize the result in the DFS function. So, so initially the pair, so the number of nodes in the subtree of u, if we don't consider the left subtree and the right subtree, then we only have one node, which is u itself. So the number of nodes starts at one, and then the sum of depths will start at zero if we only consider the node u. And after this, we'll consider the left and right subtrees if they exist. Does it make sense so far? Yep. Okay, so um, so now we'll add the sum of depths of all of the nodes in the left subtree of u. So uh, let's p let's call this p child, and this will be uh, returned from the DFS function when we. Uh, for for the left child, okay, and then, uh, and then, we add the sum of depths of all nodes in the left subtree. So initially, we add the original depths, but then the original depths get increased get increased by one. So the total increase is the number of nodes in the left subtree. Yep. Get out first. We add the originals. Uh, Oh wait, no. We add the original sum of depths and plus the increase, which is just the number of nodes. And then that will give us the new sum of depths when we consider uh, the left subtree of u. And we also need to update the number of nodes uh, in the subtree of u. So to that, we just add uh, the number of nodes in the left subtree of u. Is this part right? Uh, this part uh, does it make sense so far? Yep. Okay, so now this is for the left subtree, and uh, we basically do the same similar thing for the right subtree. I think we just need to change this. Yeah, I think it's all right now. So this DFS function will uh, return. Oh yeah. Oh, I need, also need to add it to the answer. So, store store a global variable called answer, and then after I calculate the sum of the depths for the subtree of u, I add that sum to the answer. So, I add uh, the second value of the pair. Okay. Right. This is for DFS now. For the entire uh, program. I'll just have something similar to the one before. Just call some depth and then node starting from the root. Yep. Applies answer to zero. I call the DFS function for the root and then I return the answer. And yeah, this looks, yeah, this looks pretty much it. Can you just quickly walk me through um, the example here at the top uh, conceptually, like if you were to run that function? Okay, so, uh, so first of all, the we call DFS on the root, and then the DFS on the root calls like all these, uh, so all of the children, and then, so the first uh, nodes that return any values are the bottom nodes. So yeah, uh, the leaf nodes eight nine. 
six and seven, uh, they don't have any left child, left children or right children, so they'll just return the pair one zero. So these three and five. Oh yeah, and five. Yep. Okay, and then after that, uh, let's look at four and three. So four and three, they initially start at one zero. Then when we look at the left subtree, uh, let's look at the left subtree. So they, the second value of the pair is added with the both values in the subtree. So uh, one is added and then the first value of pair is added with just the number of nodes in the subtree, which is one. And then that's when we process the left child. Okay, I'll just, uh, once we process the left subtree, uh, one zero becomes two one. And then yep. process of right subtree becomes three two. So the value of the pair returned by four and three is three two. Yeah. Okay, so now let's look at node two. Node two also starts out with one zero. And after the looking at the left subtree, which is four, uh first we add it to the second value of the pair. We add both numbers, so becomes uh, 5 and then you also add the number of nodes so then comes 4. Now we move on to the right subtree. Our right subtree is 5 so uh, for the second value we, get, we just add 1 and for the first value we also add 1. So the pair returned by subtree 2 is 5, 6. Yep. And just to make sure, uh, the, the last thing before I think we can move on here, can you re-walk re me through how you got the five uh, here? Okay, so in order to update the second value of the pair after yep. uh, after like uh, processing the left uh, subtree, I add the sum of depths of the left subtree and the number of nodes in the left subtree. So left subtree is four. Right. So the sum of depths is two and the number of nodes is three. So I add... Uh, 2 plus 3, which is 5, into the sum of that. Yep. Okay, cool. So listen, I think, I don't think we need to walk through the rest of the, of the, of the tree. I think we, we, we have the idea here. Um, let's move on to something completely uh, different. You... Okay. Oh, yeah. Right, can you hear me? Uh, I, I, can you repeat the last sentence? Yeah, so I said I said I think we can we can stop going through this example. I think this makes sense, um, and let's move on to something completely uh, different. Okay. Sure. So let's do. I'm actually going to copy paste another example. I want you to imagine that we had. Um, or actually, you know what? Let's let's just work off of this binary tree. We can just work off of this one. Sure. So. We have this binary tree here. We've we've so far been able to calculate the depths in the binary tree, the depths in all of the subtrees, right? Now, what if we wanted to calculate the distance of every node, not to the root, but to another node? So for example, I would give you like the node with value three, and I would probably give you the root node of the binary tree as well, just so that you, you have the entire structure. And I wanted you to return the distance or the sum of the distances of every node in this binary tree to the node with value three or to whatever, you know, second node I give you. Mm. Oh, okay. So each, each node will have a different value, right? A uh, value as in like the, the integer value? Yeah, but you could imagine that I would give you the, the actual reference to the node. Oh, okay. But so as, as an example, like, if we were to call this function with the root node as like the target node, you know, there's a target node, um, the, the, the answer that you'd be looking for would be the, um, the, the node depths, just the, your, your first question, right? The distance of every node against the root node, and you sum up those distances. But now what if I gave you as the target node like another node, not the root node. So the function will look like uh, sum this like this. Yes. Yep. Okay. 
And the root in our case is always, like with the example that we had above, is always going to be one. Or the and node with value that one. Again. Yeah, the, the root node in our example is always going to be the, the node with value one. Okay. Okay, so... Mm. In... I think I need to, uh, I think I need to, uh, maybe I need to pre-calculate some, uh, information for each of the nodes. Like maybe okay. one DFS, uh, won't be enough. So I'm just wondering, can I do, can I create like more Am I allowed to like add new variables into the node class? Totally. Well, let's allow that. Okay. So, um, so first thing is, uh, and you can, you can almost assume that like to, to your question, if you wanted to, you could, you could first transform this entire tree into a tree that fits you or that you prefer, right? And then you kind of do whatever you want to do. Oh, okay. So I'll just, now I'll just, uh, each node will have left, right, have a value. And then we will also have a, also calculate the sum of deaths in the subtree of each node. So okay. I'll just call this sum of depths. And in order to calculate the sum of depths in each subtree, you can do, you can use what I just uh, did up here. And so that'll be our first DFS, is to calculate this value, sum of depths in each subtree for each node. Okay. So, and then for the, for the second part, um, I'm actually, I'm actually just going to end up calculating the sum of distances to each node, not just the target node. So, um, what I'll do is I'll start from the root node. I know, I know the sum of distances to the root node, like, and that'll just be the sum of depths. And, uh, yeah. I just need to know, wait, wait, actually, okay, I'll change this, not sum of deaths, but just, uh, the number of nodes in each subtree. Okay. Okay. So, so let's say I know the sum of distances for the, for each node to one. And if I know that, then can I figure out the answer for node two or node three instead. And the answer is actually yes, because what we'll do is, uh, let's say that, let's say that the current value is X. And then uh, in order to modify the sum of distances, notice that when we move the target node from node one into m node two, uh, all nodes inside the subtree of node two will have the distances decreased by one. Yep. And then all nodes outside of the subtree of node two will have their d distances increased by one. Yep. All right, so, so, uh, so in this case, some, some distances uh, from, uh, for target node two, you can write that as sum of distances from one minus number of nodes in subtree of two, because all these nodes have their distance decreased by one, and we just add the number of nodes outside subtree two, since uh, their since they have their uh, distances increased by one. Okay. Okay, so uh so in the second DFS, what I'll do is every time I every time I call 
from a parent to a child, I'll use this, uh, these two pieces of information to update the sum of the distances. And in this way, once I DFS onto a certain node, I will know that node's uh, sum of distances to every other node. Now, can you walk me through your logic for this? So I, I understood what you just said, um, and I understood how you found this, the sum of distances for two, but can you walk me through this same logic for like another node in the tree? Like for instance, let's say we went with the node with number five as the target. Does, can you walk me through this logic? Uh, okay, so, so first uh, we, so DFS will like first go to one, and it'll go to two, then it'll go to five. So, um, so now in order to go from one, to go from one to two, we already have this formula. And now we need to go from two to five and we can use a similar formula as well. So sum of distances for five is equal to sum of distances for two minus number of nodes in subtree five plus number pair of nodes outside subtree five. And I, I see. So you are, you are basically, when you find a node like node five, you, you go to its, you treat its parent as the new like root node kind of, and you apply that, fun, that function on that parent node. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, just to clarify, for for this for here, some of distances five. Um, okay, let's say we had gone with five uh, with eight. So imagine I'm going to type out something here. Imagine we had done some of distances of eight. What would you What would you do here? Uh, I'll just I'll just look at it's. Also, uh, first of all, the DFS will DFS will visit all nodes, and then yep. Uh, eight is the only one we care about, so I'll only go through nodes one, two, four, and eight. So when DFS from node one, we have this value already, and then, and then we'll this starting from one, we DFS to two, and then using this formula, we can calculate the sum of distances for two, and then then from two, we DFS to four, and then using a similar formula, we can find the sum of distances for four. And then starting from, and then we DFS onto node eight. And then we find that node eight is the target node that we want. So then we just, then we'll set the answer to the sum of distances for eight. And the formula would be sum of dists on four minus number of nodes in subtree, um, in subtree, there would be no subtree here. Oh, well, it'll just have, it'll just be, uh, like node, it'll, it'll be subtree eight. It'll just be the node eight. Right. Okay. And then plus number of nodes, um, outside your subtree, which would be node nine. Oh, uh, it'll actually be then like the entire tree except for, uh, eight. So in fact, um, I'll write this formula. I'll rewrite this formula a bit, so so if n is okay. total number of nodes, then sum of distances for some node uh, u is equal to the sum of distances for its parent minus um, the size of subtree of node u plus the number of nodes outside of the subtree. And we know that total number of nodes is n. So in order to find the number of nodes outside the subtree, you can just do n minus s of u. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So you are you are adding not only the the right subtree of the parent, but also all the other number of nodes because they all they all have like one more distance to the sum of distances of four. Yeah. Exactly. Or of the parent rather. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, Guess so. Let's try to code this out. Okay, so um, start with 
the answer. And then for the first, uh, so in the first DFS, I'll calculate the, the sum of node, the number of nodes in each subtree, and also the sum of distances for the first, for the first node. So let's see. So just copy the function from above. So we get the pair from DFS one root, and then uh, DFS one will be pretty similar to this. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. Okay, we don't need to modify anything in here except. Um, I'll call it also, oh yeah, by the way, uh, I need to remove this answer because that's not what we're looking for. And I also need to yep. set the size of the subtree. So uh, I'll just represent the size of the subtree with SC and I'll, and I'll set that to, and that's equal to the first element of the pair. So after that, um, uh, do you follow along so far? Yep, yep. So after that, uh, first I can find n, which is the number of nodes. And n will just be the number of, of nodes in the root subtree. And then. Okay. Then I'll just write this first return answer. And then we do the DFS2. And we maintain the sum of distances for each node. And we also just set the answer to the the sum of distances for the target node when you find it. So DFS2 starts at the root and then um, the sum of distances for the root is just p dot second. It's just the sum of the depths because it's a root. And then you want to find a uh, target. So I'll pass that in as well. Okay, so here I have DFS2 takes in the current node, takes in the sum of distances for node u, and then also gives me target. And then the first thing is if if we if we find that node u is a target, then our answer is just the sum of distances for the current node. So I'll just check for that. Then uh, I'll set the answer to the sum of distances, and then and then given the information for given the sum of distances for node u, we now want to find the sum of distances for its left child and its right child, and we also want to DFS on all nodes in the left subtree and the right subtree. So just do this for the left subtree first. Okay. Okay, so uh, in order to find a uh, new sum, this, I used the formula uh, back there. So it's the sum of the distances of the parent minus the subtree, the, the size of the subtree of the left of the left child plus yep. the number of nodes outside of the subtree, which is just n minus uh, the size of the subtree. Then after I find the new sum of distances, I can call dfs2 on the left child. Is this part good so far? Yep. Okay, and then I just do the exact same thing for the right child as well. And yeah, this should be it. Cool, okay, so can you walk me through, let's copy, let's maybe copy the example. Mm -hmm. um, let's copy it down here. 
I copied it at the bottom of the doc. Can you walk me through, but like go, let's go through the actual code and walk me through, um, let's and say walk if we had me. been looking for, you know, the, the distances to four. Can you repeat, four. Can you repeat that sentence again? There was yeah, yeah. some issue. So, yeah, yeah. So can you walk me through all of your code and let's assume that the target node had been like four. Right. Um, uh, should I go through DFS one as well? Because we kind of went through that already. Not DFS. Yeah, not DFS one. Just the main function uh, here, and then and then DFS two. Okay. So DFS one. Uh, after I call DFS one, get n is equal to the first element of the pair, which is just uh, nine. And then also find that the sum of distances for one is second element of the pair, which is, it was uh, 16, right? Uh, yes. But so, so this is where for DFS one, are you not using your, are you using the solution to your, to the first problem or to the second problem? Uh, oh, oh, I'm just, I rewrote the DFS one, just, uh, it's similar to the one for the second problem where I return a pair and the first element of the pair is the number of nodes and the second element of the pair is the sum of depths. Okay. And, but, but for, but the sum of depths, uh, are you doing? Aren't you here doing the sum of all of the depths? It's the sum of depths in the subtree of you. Okay. And, but do you, and the, 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 the sum of, so it wouldn't be 16. It would be 26 with what you wrote here. No, or am I, am I not following correctly? It's not the sum of the depths of all subtrees, it's just the subtree for node one. Okay. And here you're doing, so in here you're doing P, uh, P dot second plus or equal P child dot second plus P child dot first. But why are you doing plus P child dot first then here? Uh, in order to update the, I think it helps if we look back at the original code here. So in the original code, in order to find the, in order to find the sum of depths for all subtrees, I add the p. I add the second value of the pair for all nodes u. But then, uh, yep. But then here I'm only considering, uh, here for p I'm only considering the pair returned by the root. Oh, I see. Okay. You only return. You don't, you don't add them all up is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so I received this information from DFS one and that's when I start going to DFS two. So I do it on node one first and the first sum of distances is just 16 and then, um, and then, and I pass in the target, which is node four and this will give me the uh, new sum of depths, uh, new sum of distances. It'll set it to, so it goes to the left child. It processes the left child, which yep. is two, and then set it to 16 minus the size of subtree two, which is five, and then plus uh, n minus five, uh, f plus uh, nine minus five. And this total ups to uh, 15. So yeah, this holds up to 15. And then after I find the new sum of distances, DFS two is called on node two with, uh, with the sum of distances of 15 and the target is the same. Then in this DFS, uh, for the left child, the new sum of distances is calculated to be 15 minus the sum of distances uh, inside subtree four, this, no, the number of nodes inside subtree four, which is three. And I add n minus three, which 
which is 6. And then this totals up to 18. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then uh, DFS2 is called on node 4 with value of uh, 4, 18, and 4. Then here I have the if statement and sees that the node, the current node is the target node, so the answer is set to 18. And then all of, all of the nodes are called by the DFS2 function, but I'm just showing like 1, 2, and 4 because it's the only one, they're the only ones that we care about for this yeah. level. And you would return at this point, but in theory it would go to, or it could go to all the nodes. Like if, if you had had like node 7 as the target, then it would go to all of them is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. my code doesn't actually return, so it would still go, go to all of them, but then uh, it doesn't matter if it visits all of them. Oh, right. Yeah, there's no need to return preemptively. Um, okay. And can you walk me through the uh, complexity analysis of the solution? Oh, okay. So uh, for DFS1, uh, so for DFS1, we, the structure is, wait, all right. So for DFS1, we just we basically go through each of the nodes once. So yep. the complexity is linear time. And then this is, and then for DFS2, uh, we also go through each of the nodes exactly once. So it's also linear time. Yeah, and you're not, you're not doing any other like costly computations and times because you already have the um, computed values, right? Yeah, I store the sum of, I store the sizes of the subtree in the nodes already in, inside DFS1. Yeah, and so from a from a space complexity point of view, uh, what's what is this gonna look like? Uh, does this, I think, it, it does the size of the subtree count as extra space? I believe so. If you're if you're adding if if you're gonna be storing extra values, um, you'd be storing like n extra values basically. Yeah, so that would be O of n extra space. Yeah, and then the, the recursive calls are kind of disregarded because of this, and and that's fine. Um, okay, and I guess here, like, um, yeah, I think that's I think that's it. We can we can end here, William, with uh, like three minutes on the clock, roughly. Okay, sure. So, so perfect, uh, perfect timing. So will you go through a debrief or? Yeah, let's do a debrief. Um, so. First of all, I think you did like, amazingly well. Uh, spoiler alert, just like in the in the first coding interview. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so this this coding interview, I went with kind of a different approach where I, I gave you multiple problems that kind of worked on top of each other, or not even kind of, like really worked on top of each other. Um, in a real coding interview, I would have for most candidates only expected to go through the first two problems. I would not have expected to go through the third problem. You kind of knocked the first two problems out of the park. Um, the first one is very trivial. The second one is actually quite a bit more complex than the first one, uh, but you still got it really quickly. And then the third one, the third one I think is a, is an extremely difficult question that I would not expect again, a candidate to, 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 to nail um, so easily. It's also like very hard to to grasp. Um, there's a lot of like mental stuff. So it's very impressive that you did that without a whiteboard. All that to say, like just on a Google Doc, all that to say that algorithmically you did amazing. Uh, your communication skills were also really good. Um, I didn't get lost at any point in time, except that here with the, the DFS um, and that was mainly my mistake because I didn't follow the the lack of uh, adding to the answer or in the second DFS, sorry, the one that you copy pasted here. Yeah, um, yeah, you, you don't add up to the answer here. Um, but yeah, so great job from that point of view. And then for the um, for the coding, I also don't have any any criticism. Like I, I would have to look hard to find criticism. I think you did everything was readable and uh, I think it was good that you thought of 
I think like you did a very good job, I guess, going back to, this is a combination of the communication and the coding. You did a very good job of asking me, well, what's the structure of the nodes? Then asking me, am I allowed to mutate the structure of the nodes? Because that's not necessarily evident, right? Some candidates will think that they're not allowed to do that, and then it makes the problem a lot harder. So, um, yeah. Well, how do you feel about the, the interview? Well, I felt that. Um, yeah, I definitely felt that I did pretty well. So I'm really happy to hear about your um, commentary, as, your comments as well. And I'm, I'm curious, actually, like, did you did you struggle with that third problem at all? Uh, OK, so. Uh, let me think. Uh, so. So the first part was. Like, well, once I knew I could modify the structure of the node, then. Like, uh, I think it was. I think I could get it, but I just didn't know the details exactly. Like I, I, I already had the structure of the solution line. So remember how I told you about how I was going to start with a DFS on, uh, starting from root node and then go down. Yep. And I, yeah, but then I didn't think the details clearly. So initially I said that initially I said that the extra information that I would store in each node was the sum of depths. But later, as I, I think as I wrote out the formula, I realized that it wasn't the sum of depths and it was just the size of the subtree. Right, and I saw that here when you kind of like near the, at the top of the doc, when you corrected yourself on that. Yeah, um, I've done like very similar problems before. So I kind of knew the, I kind of knew what solution I uh, that would work for this problem, but I just had to figure the details out. Right, right. Well, once again, I mean, fantastic job. Uh, this was a pretty different coding interview than the one than the first one we did tonight. Uh, the first one we did had to do with like graph traversals. Uh, this one was trees. Um, but cool. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Thanks for coming on my channel. Is there? Anything you would like to say? Just that you are like an absolute monster at algorithms and coding interviews or coding problems, uh, you know, harder ones than, than typical coding interview problems. We did another coding interview uh, on my channel. I would highly encourage everyone to go check it out. Um, very different genre and uh, I won't, I, I've already spoiled it a little bit, but just go watch it. You won't regret it. And that's it. Okay, thank you. By the way, there's an alternate solution to the uh, third problem in the interview. So basically what you could do is you could just uh, recreate a tree so that the root is at the target node. And it might be easier in some ways, but using this alternate solution, you can only find the sum of distances to the target node and not all nodes. So yeah, my solution is still useful in some way. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe.